Have you ever dreamed of owning one of these amazing lenses to create gorgeous images with fantastic detail and beautiful blurry backgrounds? I've used every version of Canon's 600 mm prime lens extensively in the field and will tell you exactly which one I think is best, which one I would buy again, and which one I think is the best for you. Some of these lenses have become a lot more affordable on the used market, but there's only certain ones I would recommend buying. So make sure to watch till the end to find out which one I think is the best overall performer and the best value for money. To date, Canon has made five versions of this amazing lens, a non-stabilized version, EF image stabilized version one, two, three, and the latest RF version with the RF mount. And while they don't vary that much in actual size, they do vary quite a bit when it comes to weight and ability in the field. When it comes to these lenses, you can't really go wrong with any of them. They all will give you fantastic details, great sharpness, and beautiful soft out of focus blurry backgrounds. Here's an image taken with EF version one, version two, version three, and the RF version. And while the differences between the files are relatively small, I would actually give the edge in image quality to EF version two. So purely based on image quality, it's actually hard to pick a winner because all the lenses perform pretty well and there are other factors like image stabilization where the differences are more apparent. I would rank them newest from the RF version to oldest when it comes to the overall performance of the image stabilization. With the RF lens, for instance, I can handhold video, something that has been unheard of in other versions with a 600 millimeter prime lens. On version two, for instance, if I try to handhold video, the viewfinder is all over the place. It's really shaky. It's basically impossible to do. For photos, especially from a tripod, even the image stabilization of the version one lens is sufficient, but you will notice a more stable viewfinder in the later versions of this lens because in combination with the IBIS and the new mirrorless cameras and the image stabilization in the RF lens, for instance, you have a very stable viewfinder that doesn't move around much at all. And especially if you're into hand holding your big lenses, having a nice stable viewfinder is very helpful because it's much easier to actually track a bird and find a bird in the viewfinder. So when it comes to hand holding or shooting video, the newer versions definitely have an edge because the viewfinder is just so much more smooth and you definitely also notice an increase in more sharp images. So when it comes to image stabilization, I would definitely give an edge to the RF version followed closely by the EF version three. On all my 600 millimeter lenses, whether it's on a tripod or handheld, I like to use image stabilization mode one. There's one slight annoyance I have with the EF version three and the RF version. If you use them with cameras with IBIS in the electronic shutter mode, they will give you strange wobbles going through your pictures at times. And it almost looks like there's kind of horizontal blurry lines going through your image, distorting it at certain times. You won't notice this at much in just a single image, while I can live with the issue, it's definitely something that I hope Canon will address and fix in the future. Although the problem doesn't seem to necessarily be the lenses, but rather the communication between the image stabilization in the lens, the IBIS in the camera, and the slow readout speed of the non-stacked sensors. The best way to circumvent this issue is to actually use the first curtain electronic shutter or mechanical shutter instead of the electronic shutter and only use the electronic shutter when you really need the speed. When it comes to autofocus speed and accuracy, there's actually quite a few differences between the lenses. While all these lenses are quite accurate and I didn't have any issues with a lot of like autofocus images, for instance, there's definitely differences when it comes to the speed and I would rank them newest to oldest with the RF version being by far the fastest because it has two autofocusing motors. However, you can only power the second autofocusing motors if you're using a camera like an R3 with a bigger battery or likely the future R1. On an R5 or an R6, the difference in autofocusing speed between EF version two, EF version three and RF version are not as noticeable, but EF version three and the RF version are still a little bit faster. When it comes to the older versions, you will definitely notice a decrease in autofocusing speed and also accuracy. On the RF version, and I think on the EF version three as well, you actually have to activate to have constant manual focus available in the menu. Otherwise nothing will happen when you 
turn the ring. And this was something that had thrown me off a bit in the beginning. So you definitely want to change it if you ever intend to manually focus while your camera is going. One trick to make the older lenses focus faster and not hunt so much is to use the focus limiter. So if you know in what rough distance your subject will appear, for instance, if you're in a height, you can set your focus limiter to a certain distance so the lens doesn't actually have to hunt from the minimum focusing distance all the way to infinity to find your subject. However, make sure to not forget to reset that focus limiter next time you're out in the field because otherwise you might want to focus on something a little bit further away and then your lens won't focus. While I often don't recommend teleconverters for a majority of lenses, on these 600mm prime lenses is where they really shine and I had great results with the 1.4 and the two times extender on all the different versions. Even the two times extender gives you exceptional results. But make sure to keep in mind that we're then dealing with at least 1200 millimeter of focal length. So you need good technique, usually a tripod and decent enough shutter speed to get great images. And also don't make the mistake that you put a two times extender on because your subject is already at the other end of the field, for instance, way too far away, because then you still won't get great results. However, if you use the two times extender, if you're close to the bird and you want to take a head portrait, for instance, then you will actually get fantastic results. One of the main reasons for me to actually update to the RF version of the 600 millimeter lens was that I can now use the RF teleconverters instead of the adapted EF teleconverters on the EF lenses. Because I feel like the new teleconverters, while pretty pricey, perform exceptionally well, nice and fast when it comes to autofocusing and give me great image quality. So I definitely feel like there is an advantage there when it comes to the use of teleconverters with the RF lens. When it comes to image quality with teleconverters, I would actually give the edge to the EF version 2 with the EF version 3 teleconverters. It's closely followed by the RF lens with the RF teleconverters and then the EF version 3 lens with the EF version 3 teleconverters. For some reason, the EF version 3 lens has never worked as well with teleconverters than EF version 2 did. Teleconverters are definitely one area that distinguish the EF version 3 from the RF version because otherwise these two lenses are quite similar. But having the ability to use the improved RF teleconverters on the RF lens definitely gives it an edge to me over the EF version 3 lens. No matter which lens you currently own or plan to buy, it's important that you learn to transform your raw faults into great looking final images. And this is where I would love to help you with my pro sets and masterclass. These will not only save you a lot of time, but also help you to achieve amazing results. With my pro sets, I enable you with just one click to transform your dull raw faults into a great starting point for the editing process. And in my masterclass, I teach you step by step everything you need to know in Photoshop to make your own images stand out and make them look amazing. So if this is of interest to you, make sure to check this out down there in the description. Let's talk about the size and the weight of the different lenses because this is where the differences are the most dramatic. In terms of the size, they're all quite similar, but when it comes to the weight, things get a little bit crazy. The non-image stabilized version, for instance, weighs almost double of what the current RF or EF version 3 weighs. So there are dramatic differences how the lenses feel and handle in the field. I really loved my EF version 2 lens and I would have never thought I'm going to sell it. But once I actually touched an EF version 3 lens, lifted it up and lighter the RF lens, I was just blown away how much lighter these lenses actually felt. Just under one kilo doesn't sound as much. But in the field, when you're holding the lenses, the differences were quite dramatic and it's so much easier to handhold that RF version compared to the EF version 2 or version 1, for instance. Canon saved a lot of weight by moving their lens elements further back into the lens so the glass could be smaller and lighter. This doesn't only make it easier to handhold the lenses because the lens is now lighter, but compared to the older versions where the glass is further in the front of the lens, the newer lenses are also less front heavy, so overall they're much easier to handle and much easier to handhold. Even the difference between the EF version 2 and EF version 1 is quite noticeable in the field. So any weight savings you can afford in this case will definitely help you with performance in the field because it's so much nicer to carry the lenses 
and to use them. Even though it's easier to handhold the new lenses, I would still recommend that you have a sturdy tripod and tripod head for them. I'm currently using different Gitzo and Pro Media Gear tripods. My favorite currently is the TR344L from Pro Media Gear, and I've been using a Wimberley head, but lately I've also been using this awesome Flex Shooter Pro head that seems to work very well and is a much lighter, nicer alternative to a bigger, heavier tripod head. So with the lighter lenses, one advantage is that I can now use smaller tripods and smaller tripod heads to save even more weight in the field. So which version would I actually recommend for you to buy? If you're not a pro like me and make money with photography or have a bunch of money to burn, buying a new 600 millimeter lens is probably not that attractive because that costs a fortune. However, the good news is there's a fair amount of used lenses available on the market now, but there are a few things you have to be aware of when considering one of them. First of all, you may have guessed by now, I'm not the biggest fan of the non-image stabilized version, so I wouldn't recommend that for anyone to buy today. It will have a very attractive price, but it's also the heaviest and a little bit old and too slow for me. There's also another risk with the older versions of these lenses, all the versions below EF version 2, and that's that there's no spare parts available anymore. So if anything breaks on a lens like the image stabilization unit or the autofocusing motor, it's very likely that you won't get any more spare parts and the lens will just be rendered useless if anything breaks. On the new mirrorless cameras, these older lenses also often don't get the full frames per second in the mechanical shutter mode. On an R5, for instance, the EF version 1 only gets around 7 frames per second. It still gets the 20 frames per second in the electronic shutter mode, but the mechanical shutter mode is severely limited on some of these newer cameras when you adapt to older lenses. So buying a non-image stabilized lens or a version 1 lens has much higher risks today, but you're rewarded with a good lens for a good price. If you're willing to live with the higher risk, some of the limitations, and the much higher weight. EF version 2 doesn't have any of these limitations and also comes in at a much lower weight than these older lenses. It also has the best overall image quality and good enough autofocus and image stabilization. The current used rate for an EF version 2 lens is about half the price of a new EF version 3 or RF lens. So you're getting a fantastic lens with the best overall image quality for quite reasonable price, at least when it comes to 600 millimeter price. But what about the EF version versus the RF version, which are essentially the same lens? To me, because I don't have DSLR cameras anymore, the pick was the RF lens, because I don't have to use the adapters and I can use the new teleconverter. If you still have DSLR cameras, then you will have to go with the EF version 3, but for me personally, it made the most sense to go with the RF version. What's great about these big lenses is that while they're expensive, they also hold their value very well. My first 600 millimeter lens I bought was the EF version one and I paid 6,000 US dollars and I sold it 10 years later for 5,750 US dollars. My EF version lens two, I bought for around 9,000 US dollars and sold it many years later for around 7,200 US dollars. So that's actually a nice peace of mind to have. And one of the main reasons that I always recommend buying lenses over camera because cameras decrease in value fairly quickly, whereas these big lenses hold their value very well long-term. Some people are worried about using the adapters and adapting an EF lens to mirrorless camera, but that's really not an issue. I've done it for a while and it works flawlessly. Looking at the RF version of the 600 millimeter lens and Nikon's latest developments, it does make you wonder if Canon will introduce newly fully redesigned Canon prime lenses at some stage in the next few years. If they do, that will likely have a huge impact on the price of this current RF version. So this is definitely something to keep in mind when making your choice right now. Some people might say, why spend so much money on an expensive prime lens when I can have a 150 to 600 millimeter lens or 200 to 600 millimeter lens and get the same reach? In theory, these lenses are similar, but when it comes to working in the field, they're very different. These prime lenses just give you much better overall image quality, nicer backgrounds, better sharpness, and just overall much better performance. And another important factor is that a lot of zoom lenses have a lot of focus breathing. So if you're focusing on something that is relatively close to you, a 200 to 600 millimeter lens at 600 millimeter will have significantly less reach than a 600 millimeter prime lens. When it comes to other brands, it's actually much easier to pick 600 millimeter lenses, at least when it comes to Sony, because they only really have one version, 
Very nice version weighing under three kilos. So a fantastic lens, but there's not many options and you will probably have to actually end up buying that lens new because I wouldn't imagine that there is many used lenses for sale. When it comes to Nikon, it seems a little bit harder to pick a good 600 millimeter lens because there's some old VR versions that are quite heavy. And then there's this amazing new lens with the built-in 1.4 extender, but that comes in at a whopping 16,000 US dollars. So you either have to pay a lot or buy an older lens that weighs a lot. What would your pick be if you are a Nikon shooter? Before we finish up this video, I would highly recommend that you guys check out some of my other videos, like some awesome gear reviews or some great in the field videos where I teach you awesome techniques and let you know exactly what gear I think is best in the field. I know you will enjoy these videos very much. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got a little bit of an insight into the world of 600 millimeter prime lenses. Have you ever dreamt of owning one or actually own one? Let me know in the comments. Also give me a thumbs up for this video and make sure to subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video very soon. Bye guys.